Okay, hi, uh, welcome back. Okay, um, I'm Happy. And I'm Brad. And we are from I bet you could guess that, right? Okay, so today we would like to share with you why we use the wikis and how we use the wikis. Yeah, and actually this is for a professional communication course offered by CELC. So we want to show how it's appropriate to use in a course like ours. We're not sure if it's appropriate for a course like yours, but there may be potential. Okay, that's our overview, very short and sweet, because uh, time is of the essence. Right. Um, before we look at the rationale, uh, this, as you can see from the abstract that we sent, is about collaborative work. Uh, in many of our courses, especially our professional communication courses, students do a lot of uh, collaborative work, teamwork. And most of the time, the teamwork is done outside class. So we don't really know what they are doing until the product is done. And then we look at the product and then we say, oh my gosh, what were you doing? Right? Or sometimes they complain and say, so-and-so didn't put in the work. Um, but it's a bit too late, isn't it, to tell us that. So we thought that uh, we should look at the process too. Yeah, how, how do we know what they're doing uh, meanwhile during those time that they are out of class? So that's why uh, we thought of, the, of using the wikis or any other platforms. I think this morning you heard about Google Docs. Right? So wiki is one of the platforms. So we spoke to our dear Kenneth Pinto from CIT who helped us uh, and told us what the wiki can do. Yeah, yeah. could I also mention, Happy, that uh, because, because in our course we have a central assignment that is a project that incorporates many different aspects, many different aspects of our learning objectives. The assignment uh, itself includes business correspondence, students having meetings, uh, producing a proposal, doing interviews, doing surveys. So all of these different assignments are tied together in this way it's an integrated assignment and we wanted to keep tabs. We wanted to follow what each group was doing in their progression through these different assignments. And that's why the wiki seemed appropriate. So for the uh, rationale, accessibility, because you are online, uh, you can see what everyone is doing and every other student can see what each other is doing. So that's why we chose the wiki. And of course, accessibility also, the fact that we can get Kenneth very easily. <coughs> uh, if there's any problem, technical problem, he, he can help us. Right? So that's the accessibility for. Okay. Then of course, the next one is accountability. Uh, students get a little pressure because um, everybody else puts their work there and they know, oh gosh, that group has already done this and we haven't done that. Okay, we better get going. Right? At the same time, uh, they, they know that Okay, they put their information, as Brett mentioned, uh, they put their meeting notes there and they tell us who is doing what. And so if we are looking at it and we say, oh, so and so is supposed to be in charge of this, but nothing is up there yet, so why is it not up there? Right. So that's the accountability. So they know that, okay, uh, they already told us that that's what they have decided to do and this is their timeline, this is what they want to do at different parts, different times. And so we are looking at it and if we don't see it, then of course, we will ask, okay, well, why is it not up yet? Right, so there's this idea of accountability. And the last point here is availability. Uh, we, are, we all have very tight schedules. Right? As you know, you're busy doing your research or your teaching. And so sometimes the students can't get you. And when you want to get there at night, uh, I'm sorry, you're at home and they are there. So uh, you can log on and you can give comments any time of the day, early in the morning, late in the afternoon, whenever you are available. So that helps. That helps you to be available. At the same time, the students can also uh, give comments any time of the day to not really keeping to a particular schedule like, oh, I must only answer it from 10 to 12, no, any time of the day. So that's the three A's that, uh, uh, that's why we want to use the wiki. Brad? Yeah, so the first step actually is the students uh, set up a wiki page, but we've made that in our course easier because we've done it for them. Thank you, Happy. <laughs> Happy did this for them, I should say. Uh, we set up a wiki page for each one of our tutorial groups, and then within that, we, we set up a page uh, for each one of the assignments. So as I mentioned before, there are five, basically five assignments that are interrelated. Uh, business correspondence, meetings, and really it's, it starts with the meetings. The business correspondence will be letters that the students write 
to different faculty members. Maybe some of you have been interviewed by our professional communication students related to some topic. Um, the proposal itself, uh, what else do we have happening there, Happy? Uh, oh, uh, survey. survey, interview questions, and students survey write, and then we give feedback on the questions. Right. right. But if you're teaching three classes, let's say, then you, on your same wiki page, you can create three classes. So that all the three classes know what each other is doing. And actually, the stu we give students access to other classes. So that kind of minimizes any kind of plagiarism because they, they know what each other is doing and you can't say, oh, no. So we know that, okay, the time stamp there also tell us who's, who had the idea first or was it that they stole someone's idea. Okay, but they all can see each other's uh, wiki pages. I might ask this question. How many of you have used wikis? Some people have already used them. So we're probably rehashing things that you know. Of course, the first step is you log in. And I'll, I'll go through the process uh, at the end of our slide presentation. Um, next, happy. Uh, this, this is what our initial wiki pages look like for each one of our tutors. So in this course, we have five, <clears throat> five different tutors that have a, a number of different tutorial groups each. So each tutor has his own kind of general wiki page. There I am, BB. Down here is Happy Go, HG. Uh, within that, <clears throat> this is actually more specific than it, it, it should be. Within each tutor's wiki page, we would have the different groups, the different tutorial groups. So I happen to have like group four and group 10. I would have group four and group 10. So you would go into group four and group 10, and within that, you would see the different assignments. But this is even more specific. This is, down to the, this is down to the meetings. This is just the meetings, the wiki page for meetings for all of the tutorial groups that I had over the course of two semesters. And we don't specify the number of meetings, so it's up to the group to decide how many meetings they need to complete their work. Some of them actually do meetings by Skype. And so they actually attach a, a link for us to, to look at the points that they had discussed somewhere else. Yeah, I should mention something about the course. Actually, the objective of the course is to give students experience uh, with professional communication. And that professional communication would include all the different assignments that I've mentioned. Uh, the, 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 the bulk of this course is focused on a project. And <clears throat> this particular term, the students, each team had to investigate an industry in Singapore uh, whether it was education or advertising or uh, gambling, uh, casinos, something like that. They had to investigate an industry by interviewing people within that industry and uh, identify what are the main areas of communication that were required in that industry. <clears throat> so their initial meeting, the first meeting that they had for this, would be when they brainstormed to come up with an industry. Like Happy and I, if we are on this team, if we have a team, what industry are we going to investigate? And that would be the first meeting. So one of us would write down the agenda, the other person would take notes, and all of that would be posted on our wiki. Okay, yeah, this is the one that I was talking about. So if, I, if I'm teaching group two, one of the tutorial groups, this is the way we actually set it up. We set it up so that every assignment that is part of this group project, part of this project, is actually uh, delineated with a wiki page. So we have the business correspondence. On that would be all the letters that a particular team or the various teams write to people who they may, might want to interview. <clears throat> uh, another form of business correspondence, the students have to do a survey. And they usually survey. Um, a cohort in a particular faculty. So that letter also has to be posted on the wiki. Now again, we're dealing with professional communication. The purpose of this is for the tutor to have a chance to look at the communication that's, been, that's taking place between the, te the student teams and whoever they're communicating with. <clears throat> uh, Happy, can we go back just for a second? Sure. Yeah, you see here we also have the des designing survey questions, proposal, or oral presentation. So within each one of these wiki pages, each team will post all of its written documents. And one of the values of the wiki, of course, and for those of you who know, is that 
if I go in and edit Happy's letter, if she's writing a business correspondence to Kenneth Pinto because she wants to interview him, uh, maybe finding out something about the CIT industry, um, I can go in and edit her letter, and all of those edits can be apparent within the wiki. So the multiple drafts are archived within the wiki. So I, as a tutor, can go in and see what the different students have done and how they've contributed to editing the documents. Yeah, and I think the function, the, there's a feature here that only the tutor can delete a page. So they can't really delete something that's there unless they ask you permission to delete it. Yeah. Scary, right? So yeah, so you're the only one who can delete the things. <coughs> okay, so here's our instructions. You know, for under each wiki page for every group, then we, we have these instructions spelled out. Of course, this is the type of thing we go over in class, but it's nice that they can refer to it on the wiki pages as well. So you can write whatever instructions you want at the beginning of the wiki so as to <coughs> remind them of the project that you have. And I had a, a group of students who were investigating the legal industry, and they called themselves legally blonde. They were all, of course, uh, not blonde. So it was an interesting to uh, title for their group. So there's some form of creativity in case, because it's kind of like dull, black and white. You know, students like all this multi stuff on their thing. And I think one of the constraints which we talked later is that you, 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 know, you can't add a lot of things that you want to. But yeah, you can have some color in the wiki. Uh, one of the advantages of using the wikis, of course, too, is that you can make comments on each other's work. And this is just an example. Unfortunately, most of the actual work that the students were posting on their wikis is too long to be captured in one slide. But it is easy to capture some of the comments. And I, I can't remember exactly what yeah, this was. You wrote, typically American, you guys are rocking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> OK. Can't escape my roots, sorry. But yeah, you can add the comments, but it's a long list, and like say, but later he'll show you some examples. Yeah. Okay, and so now we can lock on to show you. Oh, it's still there. Okay, so as you see, I have my my uh, wiki page, my dashboard. And what you as an instructor would do is, if, if you wanted to, actually, I think it's much better just to let the students set up their own wiki pages. What we've discovered is that students prefer to do it themselves. Even when I take the time and trouble to set up something for them, very often times, they will go in and set up their own. <clears throat> oh, that gives Kenneth a headache. Yeah, I, 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 we will mention as one of the constraints of this is that we, because we used NUS wikis um, at least the first term, and this was a year ago that we started this, um, there was a reaction by many of the students that, oh, we don't like to use just that. You know, let us use what we want. So Google Docs, uh, wetpaint.com, there were a number of diff different wiki sites that students wanted to utilize. And I made the mistake. Uh, a year ago, um, semester two of last year, of telling students, okay, use whatever you want. And that proved to be an amazing, huge headache. Because then I was going to wet paint and Google Docs and Wiki in US. And then I came back to. I'm confused. Yeah, everybody was confused. So. And that makes it harder for the students to look at each other's because they had to go from one to another. Right. So that's a, a, a yeah, problem. Okay, so here would be my main page for my two groups starting this, this term. But the examples I'm going to show you are actually from a year ago, from semester two of last year. So you see here I have diff my different groups, two, four, and 10. This is from last year and from this past term. If I go into group two, then you see here these so-called child pages. And these are the different assignments. So what we required students to do was set up, for instance, in the business correspondence, go in there and set up their team page. So here I have the different teams. 
And you can see the legally blonde, we have the le legally blonde business correspondences. So under that title, you'll find all of the legally blonde business correspondence. And this, would, this is an example. This um, would be their first business correspondence. And, and you see how much they can actually upload. And this is something else that I find. The students actually work on these documents in some other format and then import it to NUS Wiki, which is fine. <clears throat> And then you can, you can see the sort of comments that they're making here. And then within this, the, these so-called child pages are the like, extended branches of the, of the main wiki. So they've got different wiki pages here for each one of the business correspondences that they've created. So if we go into something like uh, this one, you see that they've created this interview email for professors and teaching staff in the NUS law faculty. <clears throat> and they actually sent this letter to people at different universities, uh, not just within NUS. And here's a reply from Simon Chester at New York University. So they, they not only post their letter, but they've also uploaded the letter response that they received. And again, the value of this, the real value of this is that I can kind of keep tabs of what's happening. Um, one problem with that is that it ups the amount of work that I've had to do. And that's a serious consideration. That's a very serious consideration. I, we also use blogging in our course. And um, by the time I respond to my students' blog posts, and by the time I look at all of their uploads to the wiki, um, I think I've dedicated quite a bit of time to giving the students feedback and input. And that's probably why I don't have any feedback here. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's one caution, you know, when the students paste someone else's email here, um, we always ask students to be very careful because sometimes things in the email may be sensitive, isn't it, right? You can't just keep on pasting people's email if it's uh, say something that is kind of like private. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why our wikis are actually only, uh, it's not open to NUS, actually it's meant only within our core. And so, but still the students have to be very careful because sometimes, like one of the students interviewed uh, the provost uh, and so we asked whether they could put this up then, you know, it depends on what the provost says, right? Of course, it's kind of like, okay, because it's politically correct. That, that's fine, but it, ha it has to depend. You have to read it first before, or you ask them to, <coughs> or when you see it, then you think it's not good, then you have to delete it, right? So that's uh, that's an issue of, of the sensitive nature of posting another person's email to you. Now, as, as I mentioned before, one of the, one of the uh, challenges that we've encountered is that the students have very strong preferences for which uh, wiki site that they use. And, um, I, I think that that's, that's valid. You know, them making a choice, I think, is an important part of their education. So I, 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 I tend to agree that they should have a choice. The problem is, again, if you have one group doing wet paint and another group using NUS Wiki and another group using Google Docs, it does become confusing. And it, it limits the amount of interaction that happens between the different teams. So the way you organize this as an instructor is vital. You know, uh, keeping down your amount of work. I think we just ten minutes of Q&A. Okay, so we already discussed this with you, and so we are leaving the last ten minutes for any questions because this is a practical thing, and so we thought 